In this video, we're going to look at the decomposition required practical. So we're going to look at the effect of different temperatures on the breakdown of fats by lipase. Now over here, I've got a beaker of some milk. Now, as you know, if you leave milk for a few days at room temperature, it will uh, go sour. Now, the reason for that is because bacteria in the milk will start the decay process. Now, bacteria uses enzymes to produce acidic molecules, which is why the milk uh, tastes sour and um, also tastes a bit acidic as well. Now, the other two beakers contain lipase and sodium carbonate. Over here, I've got two test tubes. Now, in the first test tube, it's, I've labelled it um, lipase and it only contains lipase solution. In this bright pink um, solution, I've got 5 cm cube of milk, 7 cm cubed of sodium carbonate, and I also added uh, 5 drops of uh, phenylethylene, which is why the um, solution has turned pink. And remember, sodium carbonate is alkaline. Um, I also added um, 5 cm cubed of lipase solution into this. I've got this water bath set at 40 degrees Celsius. I've placed both test tubes into the water bath and I'm just going to place this digital thermometer into the test tube and just wait until it reaches 40 degrees Celsius before I start the next step of the practical. The test tubes have now reached a temperature of 40 degrees Celsius. So now I'm going to use pipette to transfer one mil of uh, lipase into the milk solution. And as soon as I do that, I'm going to start the uh, stopwatch and I'm just going to give it a stir with the stirring rod and I'm, con and I'm going to continue timing this until the solution turns colourless. As you can see the milk solution is no longer pink and it's colourless or it's gone white again. Now the reason for that is because the lipase has broken down the lipids into fatty acids and glycerol and it's the fatty acids that make the milk uh, taste sour. I've also stopped uh, my stopwatch and recorded the results. Here are some results from earlier. So as you can see, the other temperatures that I looked at were 10, 20, 30, 40, 50 and 60 degrees Celsius. And I also repeated the practical uh, three times at each temperature and then I calculate a mean. Okay, so what do the results show us? Now enzymes work really slowly at low temperatures. So as you can see at 10 degrees, um, the average time that it took for the solution to turn colorless was 608.44 seconds. Now at certain temperatures, uh, the reaction is taking place at its fastest, so that would be the optimum temperature. Now, over here, it would be 50 degrees Celsius because it only took 33.74 seconds uh, for the solution to turn colourless. And then after the optimum temperature, uh, the mean time it took for the solution to turn colourless increases. So at that point, and if we continued with um, the temperatures and looked at temperatures above 60 degrees, we would have found out that the time would have increased further, meaning that the enzyme has now denatured.